She is very much interested in functional programming, blockchain, distributed systems, IoT, and software design. So please give a round of applause to Daniela Ivanova. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Let me introduce myself for those who don't, don't know me. My name is Daniela Ivanova, and I'm an Elixir developer from Bulgaria. I have been working with Eternity for about two years on different decentralized projects. I've been enjoying my work working with the Eternity's team and working on the Elixir SDK project. For those who doesn't know what uh, Elixir is, Elixir, it's a functional programming language uh, runs on Erwang uh, virtual machine. Elixir builds on top of Erwang and shares the same abstractions to build uh, to build distributed and fault tolerance uh, applications. Since the end of February of this year, my colleagues and I started work on Elixir SDK, which will communicate with Eternity Not. So far, we have implemented the following high-level models and utility functions to work with client, account, chain, oracle, contract naming system, channel and noise listener implementation. Both generalized and basic accounts are supported. I will go over all the implemented models and try to explain what they do. The client structure holds all the data that is needed to perform, uh, all the data that is needed need to order, uh, in order to use the Elixir SDK. Uh, it helps us collect and manage all data to, to, that is needed to perform a request to the HTTP endpoints. In account model, we implemented various functions to interact with accounts. Some of the functions are spend function. In the example here, you can see how one account can perform spend operation to send tokens to another account. Also, we have get account info function, and you can see how all the information for the account. In the chain model, we implemented chain-related activities. Some of the functions are get current key block height, get transaction, get pending transactions, get current generation. There are many others functionality implemented as well. Oracle model covers Oracle-related activities such as registering a new Oracle, querying an Oracle, responding from an Oracle, extending an Oracle, retrieving Oracle and queries functionalities as well. The contract model contains all contract-related functionality. It implements functions needed to deploy, call, compile contracts and its components. The naming system model has many functionality needed to manipulate with the Eternity naming system. It allows us to pre-claim, claim, update, transfer, and revoke those names. In order to ease the development or save more time for users and developers, we implemented these functions using Piper by, by using Pipe Operator. I will show some examples here. You can see how you can claim or update a name easily by using Pipe Operator, as well as for transferring and revoking a, a name. So far, we implemented and tested all on-chain uh, transaction and on-chain manipulations. And uh, they're getting channel info by ID, opening a new channel, depositing to a channel, withdrawing from a channel, closing so and closing mutually and channel, and many others. Our SDK supports signing all of these transactions with both generalized and basic account types of accounts. We also partially support channel off-chain uh, transaction and off-chain trees manipulation, but these features are still under development. Noise listener 
is in, was implemented. We have established connection between our peers and new blocks so that transaction can be received from them. Publishing functionality for, co for, for all key and micro blocks are added and we also support publishing functionalities for all type of transactions. Additionally, we have implemented all functionality needed to, to uh, connect to mainnet uh, or testnet by, uh, by providing network ID, defining your own network by passing list of peers. We can receive information about new key and micro blocks, new mine transaction and new events. We implemented two showcase applications built on top of Eternity blockchain by using our Elixir SDK. Dabs were done during our two days hackathon with the idea to, of showcasing of some of, his, of the SDK's feature. The first project is Contract Monitor. It keeps track of a smart contract's usage in real time by using but utilizing the SDK's event listener. We also uh, retrieving data from the past by, uh, by using the middleware. The second project is called Smart Oracle. It's a console application built to automate uh, the Oracle job. Users will be able to load any account or even existing Oracle in it. The Oracle will cycle through requests to a node and will list all queries made to, to it and process them. We decided to implement the connection to Binance API, getting price ratio from the given, uh, from given cryptocurrencies. How you can see here the example, now I will make a small demo of, of this project. It's not that easy. Just my mouse. Okay. Perhaps? I don't know. A bit, a bit left. <laughs> so, no. Let's try catch. No, no, no. Is that not it? No, I just wanted, sorry. I would like the mouse to come to my. Again? Yeah, to come here. Uh, no, no, no. I would like to to come on my on my screen on my screen. Yeah. And why is not? I don't know. Can you? No, no. Maybe uh, let's try from this side or from the top. <laughs> I'm not sure on which side. For the mouse. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, we don't want to play. We want to, we want to, we want to. Okay, let's do this. Yeah, we don't want you to see the secret things on a computer. It's complicated. Okay, and there it is. Oh. Okay. Yeah. yeah. yeah okay. Now I will present how Smart Oracle works. First, we have to configure it our Smart, Smart Oracle. It's located in config folder, in config.ex file. Um, it's here in the config section, you can see uh, in the client, uh, in the client section, uh, all the 
all the information about the client, how public key, secret key, network ID that we, we need to use when we start our application. Below, you can see all configuration of the Oracle itself. These settings will be used when we are registering on Oracle. Now, we have to start our eternity not locally. After the notch is started, we're ready to run our application. Okay. At this moment, the Oracle doesn't have any pending queries. How you can see here, the list is empty. And we don't have any pending queries. Now we will make some queries to our Oracle. Okay, now we make it to queries to our Oracle. And let's see if we got a response from our Oracle. Yeah, how you can see, we got a response from our Oracle. There, right here, the responses. Here it's Ethereum to Bitcoin and I tokens to Bitcoins. This was my quick demo how, how Smart Oracle works. Uh, let's just see, yeah, okay. Okay. Here's some useful information where is located uh, Elixir SDK in uh, Eternity repo, where is Smart Oracle repo and some other information. I would like to thank my colleagues for the hard work they put in, in this project. They are Artur Krat, Bujdar Nikolov, Dimitar Velev, and uh, Filip Filvarski. <laughs> thank you very much, and for me, being very happy to work with Eternity. I'm very glad to be part of Eternity ecosystem. <laughs> Right. Um, before we ask questions, I know that Daniela was really nervous, but I think she nailed it. Like, just so give you a round of applause a little bit louder to Daniela. Thank you. Okay. Right. So, questions. Yeah. There we go. Um, did you reuse any code from the Erlang code base from the full node? And if so, how did you integrate it? Sorry, I couldn't understand you. <laughs> uh, my question is, did you reuse any code, any Erlang code from the full node implementation? And if so, how did you integrate it into the SDK? Yeah, actually many times we've been going to the Erlang code and uh, testing all the code and actually take everything that we've been implementing is actually we've been reading the Erlang code and just re re implementing in our Elixir um, SDK project. My question is rather, whether you took the code directly, since you can no, go back and forth between directly. Erlang and Elixir, mm. right? No, we cannot take the Erlang directly. Yeah. You did not use it? Mm, not directly. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, Any more? Okay, one more there. Yeah. So when you move to a new language like Elixir, you also want to really use the kind of features that language offers in order to make something better than Erlang. I saw one of those features on your slide, the pipe operation, where you can pipe different um, naming uh, services there. So are there any other features that you found very useful to use in this context, where you say, oh, this is really where Elixir shines, and which probably would be an improvement uh, for the Erlang team as well to, to kind of use that kind of features? Yeah, pipe operator is really good and very uh, really pow powerful and makes everything so easier. 
also from Elixir that um, I, I cannot I cannot uh, shall we do it shall we move some? to the next question yeah okay. yeah but thank you anyway <laughs> thank you any more guys yep right one right here um, in the LXC community, where do you think is a good place to, to, to also reach out and maybe motivate some, some people to start building like these little applications? Do you have some, some ideas where are good places to go and to kind of uh, do some advertising? Yeah, maybe we can post some posts in the Elixir community forum. Yeah, there are actually some forums that we can make some posts there and we can just tell the people what we are doing. Actually, it's a big community and it's growing up every day. And I think this will be a good idea too, to do something of this, yeah. Any more questions, guys? No? Uh, okay, round of applause to Daniela again. Thank you, Daniela. Thank you. Thank you.